Hello and welcome to this video in the lockdown learning series where we're going to take a look at bringing audio into the project. So, so far you've been using instrument tracks such as uh, the Groove Agent to create drums and Halley and Sonic etc to create other melodic tracks but now we're going to look at importing audio. So audio is definitely a staple of modern music production and you'll, you'll be using it a lot but it's it can be a little difficult to get into by jumping deep into the uh, you know the deepest water so what we're going to do is use some of the included content which comes with Cubase you may remember when you installed it it was about 15 gigabytes most of that is actually content not the Cubase program itself and you're going to take a look at that via the loop browser so there's a few things we need to do firstly I'm going to set up a cycle so I'm just going to highlight these two blocks here and hit P on the keyboard so now we can cycle around that and I'm going to turn cycle on these buttons here you may have found take you to the left or right locator so that takes me to the left locator and now I can just play my cycle without the uh, melody playing next we're going to go under media and then go to loop browser so there's a few things we need to set up here so I'm going to take you through them it's very easy to get lost in all this kind of thing, particularly because there's, we're, we're heading into more complex areas of Cubase. So I want to make this um, fairly prescriptive, but also simple so that you can end up not getting lost and us ending up having to call out the Coast Guard, as it were, to, to help you back to shore. So first things first, in this area at the top, click there and untick MIDI loops. We only want to play around with audio uh, files at the moment. So once you click that, click elsewhere and you'll see it will resort everything. Now, the second thing you need to do is what's already set here. So we're going to sort by the tempo here, okay? So normally, by default, it will probably be set on name, but we want to do it by tempo. So you click on the tempo column and get it so that the triangle is that way up, so with the point at the top, because we can see what will happen you'll probably see is the first ones on your screen will be single hits. So I'm just going to play those automatically. So these buttons down here are useful. I'm going to click that first one and that means whenever we click on a new sample it will play. So you'll get these single hits, hi-hats, snares, percussion, etc. Those are not the samples we're looking for at the moment. Okay, What we want is loops with a tempo so by sorting by tempo you click on the tempo part there and then scroll probably halfway down maybe a little further and then they start appearing with numbers as soon as you've got a number in here it means cubase knows the tempo of this loop knows how many bars it is and then that will apply well to your project as we will see so let's have a listen to that swirly arps so there's a few bars of that playing there but it's not immediately apparent that that's at 65 beats per minute but if we go on some drum beats here so there we go we've got that we can see and you can just experiment with these have a listen to them just on their own so we can see there's lots and lots of content to go through all at different tempos now by default that may not fit with your project because your project may be at a different tempo. But what you can do here is do a line beats to project. So what this does is use time stretching to make this fit with the project that we've got. So now this will play in time. And if we turn on wait for project play, it means now when we play the project, so I'm not going to do it with the, the play button because if you do that, we lose this window here. I'm just going to do it with the space bar, which is simple keyboard shortcut for pressing play then the chosen loop is going to play so let's find one that sounds like a good so let's just do that will do okay and now when we press play you can probably hear it i'm going to turn the volume control so this is just the preview volume control I'm going to turn that up So that's adding a, an interesting variation to the groove in there. But now you can just go through and find some sounds that you want, some loops that you think fit with your project. Obviously, yours is going to be different to mine.
yeah, not sure about that one. I actually quite like that one. It's got that offbeat hi-hat vibe to it. So I'm going to hit stop so you can hear me a little more clearly. So once you've found something you like, to import it, all you need to do is double-click it. So if you double-click that, So you can see it's been imported. So there's that one copy of that track and it's been time stretched, okay? I'm gonna zoom in so we can see this a little better. So if I zoom in, when you hover over it, if you see this wavy line, what that means is Cubase is fixing the tempo to fit with our project, okay? So it's taken that, originally that was at 70 beats per minute and it's taken it and changed it to 120 to make it fit, but it's only one bar long, okay? So just like you did with anything else, this is where the power of Cubase sort of or any DAW really comes to to bear is you can treat this just like you did a MIDI part in terms of making an arrangement. So we can just duplicate this. So I'm just going to do control or command D. And then we've now duplicated that across the whole thing. So it starts without it. And then when we get here, There's our audio sample, which has been time stretched. I admit it's it's probably not perfect, but it sounds a bit interesting. And again, with a lot of this, initially, it's just about experimenting and using the tools. Don't worry too much about the music you're making. That will definitely get better as you as you get to learn the tools. But in the same way, when I did my apprenticeship, we we made things like spirit levels and plumb bobs and eventually progressed up to making an entire battery charger but you have to learn the skills as you go and then use them to make useful things you know you can't just go you know what i've just learned to weld i'm going to make a supercar straight away you've got to do all these kind of test pieces so think of the music that you're making at the moment these kind of things but that's how to import loops and so on and remember you can add an extra one so if we decided we wanted to add another one you could just do the same process again so we're just going to go to, I'm just going to go to the left locator, yeah, first, and then go back to loop browser, and we can add in another one. So if we found another one we like the sound of, not that. Yeah, so some of these may not fit so well. So I'm going to scroll down to things that were about 120 anyway. So you can see the tempo of these is, is going up. And let's just find something. Yeah, so maybe I'm just going to put that in at a really low level. So again, I just double click it. It gets imported into my project. You can see that's happened behind. That's a different length, so I can just double that. But maybe I'm just gonna put this in at a really, really low level. So often you'll find you'll build things up out of multiple percussion tracks, etc. But you can add as many as you want. Obviously, go crazy. It's not too demanding on the computer because you know it's only playing back small bits of audio and there's not a lot of processing going on. But have a go at that. Try and use a loop browser to import some things. You'll probably find you can just make entire projects just using audio. So you may just start a new one, forget about all this, and just start making up pieces out of the loops that have been included. We're going to look in the next video at how we can start manipulating those. So I hope you found that useful and I'll see you again soon.